Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how I make um, or what I'm going to do with the freebie of the week. So I already showed you in a previous video how you can find the images that are free for the week in Cricut Design Space. So today I'm going to do a project with one. I'm going to make a folder for my niece because she is in love with mermaids. So I picked this image and it's still grouped together, you can see over here. So I sized it to what I wanted it to be. And you can I'm going to ungroup it because I'm gonna use some scraps materials, um, some scrap vinyl. So I'm going to kind of play around with this a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate this. Um, you can always leave it here. You can use registration marks to help making layering easier. But since I'm using scraps, I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to lay this over. With this image selected, I'm going to use contour and I'm going to get rid of this starfish and then I'm going to select the other image and get rid of that starfish the, um, the opposite starfish so that they'll be separated if you haven't used contour before you are missing out because it's fantastic I love contour and it saves me so much time when doing projects so now you see I only have this starfish selected so I'll go back to the other image and I'm going to get rid of the bigger starfish. So just go through and delete it all. You can select your, uh, you can see as I'm clicking them on the right hand side over here, it's graying them out. That means those are the contours that I'm deselecting. So we're gonna do all of those, get my starfish, and you can see on the side it went away, and that's because Oh, I missed one. I can still see that my blue box, it might be hard for you guys to tell here, but I have the blue block box around it indicating how big my image is, so I can see that I missed a piece. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do it for the bubbles too. Um, the purple I'm gonna leave in place because it's bigger, and kind of everything I feel fits around that. So I'm going to kind of use that as my guide for where I place everything. So from this image, um, I'm going to contour out the two bubbles over here and then I'm going to select this image again and uh, contour out the bigger bubbles. Now you don't have to contour, you can leave it as is and you can um, use either registration marks or you can just look and layer, it's up to you, but I prefer to use scraps whenever possible and I happen to have scraps in every one of these colors so that worked out for me. All right so now I'm going to go to make it and for those of you who haven't done a multicolor image you can see right here it's going to tell you each mat and which color it is. So what I like to do is start with my uh, bottom mat and what I'm going to do is go over and grab my pink vinyl. I'm using 651 and I see it's about four inches wide by two inches tall. So I'm going to, I've got my mat here. I'm gonna move my computer aside a little bit. I've got my mat here, and sometimes I use that as my ruler. Uh, sometimes I actually use a ruler, but I think my husband stole it. So for right now, we're doing this. So this is about two inches high. So I'm going to just cut down this scrap piece right here and I'm just going to make it easier on myself create more scraps and do it this way so I'm gonna leave that um, I'm gonna place it to the side and then I'm gonna go up and do my next color and I like to stack them up that way when I go to my mat it's so much easier for me to um, just grab what colors next because I already have it in my pile and I really love that. So now I have this kind of funky looking scrap piece here. So I'm going to lay it on my mat first and kind of see where I can move stuff around, which is really cool. If you, have, if you use the app, you can use the snap map feature. But for this, I just go, um, let me move my computer a little closer so you can see. You can drag it on the cut screen. So I see that when I place my vinyl, hold it up so you guys can see, I've got it about two inches over and an 
inch down. So when I move my image on here, I can see that I can move this, I can move this piece over here. Oh, it was over here and I can move it over here and that will fit in my vinyl and I can still use my scraps. Now I, I'll have to remember that those two were separate from the big piece, but I like to, once I'm done cutting, I go back to my screen and I look at, I have the image uh, visible for me. So I'm gonna do the orange. I have, um, I have a tiny little piece here and then I'm just gonna measure it out. It should be enough. Yep, it'll be good. And then the black piece here, which I have a perfect piece for. So I'm gonna hit continue. And I'm going to, my maker is gonna be recognized. And you can go over here after, oh, you can't see me. After you hit continue, when you're on this screen, you can go over to the left hand side here and still click on your mat and it's gonna bring it up. And if you need to make any edits, you can click edit before you cut it and you're, you can make all the edits you need, uh, move it around on the screen, uh, say something wasn't where you wanted it, or you changed your mind, you can uh, move it around here, and then you can just go down, or if you forgot to mirror, which some people do, you can do that here, um, and you can just click done. I'm using vinyl, so I'm gonna set my vinyl setting. I'm gonna set my computer aside while my machine cuts, and my mat is very sticky, I just cleaned it. So I'm going to place my vinyl down first and I'm gonna load my machine. I'm gonna show you guys. There you go. Um, put it under and I'm kind of pushing it a little as I push it in to make sure that it's really in there. So next while I'm cutting, it's kind of loud, but um, what I'm going to do is I have the uh, little folder that I'm going to use. I'm going to put it right here so you guys can see it. And I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol. I just buy this. From, I think it's Walmart or the dollar store. And I'm just going to pour a little on a paper towel. And I'm going to rub it off. I always rub everything down with alcohol. Even... Um, it doesn't matter what it is. I always do before I apply vinyl, just to make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna set it aside to dry while everything else is cutting. This um, it's penning gear, it's plastic. It's a plastic one. I got it at Walmart. I think it was 50 cents. So I'm gonna set it aside to dry. And something else I can do while I am waiting for my machine to cut is I can cut my transfer tape and get that ready. What I like to do, is cut my transfer tape the size of the whole design, um, depending on what my design is. Um, so I don't know if you can see me here, but yeah, I just have my stack of vinyl so I can pull up what color I need next. I double check on the machine just in case because sometimes uh, my kids touch it, but um, my kids are upstairs, so they're good. Um, I'm going to get my transfer tape ready, but I'm going to do that right after we're done cutting. I'm going to start weeding. Can you see me here? Okay. So I'm going to start weeding while I wait while this cuts. This way, when I'm done, everything I have as much as I can done already. So I use, um, this is a Tim Holtz weeding tool, and I usually get my weeding tool under there and I pull up a corner and just pull it back. I usually go back and do the insides afterwards. That to me is just easier to do. That way I take, can you see me? I take my big, okay. I take my big piece that's sticky and stick my little pieces to it. Okay, my machines paused for a second so let me fix that and then we'll cut the next color um, 
And then I can also, I didn't save my project beforehand, which is not a smart thing. Always save your projects. I usually save my projects frequently, but since I'm just trying to do this quickly, I forgot to do that. But usually if I save my project, I can pull it up in another tab and I'll do that to um, see how big I need my, my transfer tape. So I know my transfer tape was about, uh, I mean my whole design was about seven inches wide. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab, I have a bunch of markers over here, so I'm going to grab another one and measure it out seven inches wide. And I'm going to mark that, um, I'll cut a little slit of my transfer tape. See, a little off. I'll cut a little spot on my transfer tape at the seven inch mark. And I use the, I'm using the Caesar transfer tape here and it has grid lines. So I try my best to cut on the line. I can't cut a straight line, draw a straight line to save my life, even with a ruler. So I cut it at the seven inch wide and then I'll, um, I'll cut it down a little bit because I don't remember how tall my image was or the height of it. So let me see. Okay, I'm gonna cut it down a little ways and set it aside. And then once I'm, my machine starts cutting here, I will double check the overall size of my design. Okay, so I got my teal next. I just peel that off, stick it aside. And I also have the Cricut Brayer tool. I know it's supposed to be for fabric, but I use it for my vinyl too and love it. It gets bubbles out. It's the best. So um, I, I usually cut off my excess vinyl first. Um, it's hard for you guys to see. And I put it my scraps aside. That's what I, and then I weed so that none of my vinyl gets stuck. Um, that I don't want to. So I'm just going to, can you guys see me? Nope. All right, so I'm going to peel off the outside of the starfish. I usually fold it over so I still have a sticky part here. And then I, I'm sorry if my head's in the way, but I'm having a hard time seeing the bubbles at this angle. Here we go. So I'm just going to pull out all these little circles in here and oh that's done and then I just think this speeds up the process of the whole project if I can cut my vinyl while I or if I can read my vinyl while the rest of my pieces are cutting. I do it with HTV2 and the HTV carrier sheets you can stick to each other um, so sometimes if I'm cutting a few different things on the same project, it's so much easier to do that and then transfer everything at the end. So I'm just going to pull these little holes out. They are hard to see. Um, and then I've got my binder. Um, if for some reason you use too much rubbing alcohol and it's not dry yet, you can just wipe it down with a paper towel. You don't have to let it air dry. I just do that um, when I can. I usually, before I start a project, I will, but sometimes if I am, you know, like I like to do it while it's cutting, that way. It still has time to dry, but I'm not just sitting here waiting for everything to cut. So then I'm just going to put this piece aside with my black piece and start working on my teal piece. And I've got, again, I got, I've got this, I can save some scraps. And I have to remember that I had those two little pieces on the inside. So before I forget, I'm going to cut them off. And I think that will just make everything easier. I save in the tiniest little pieces. I know that's kind of small, but I save them because I like to make um, nail decals and stuff. I do them for my daughter, so and she's tiny, so her nails are even tinier. So I love the really little pieces. 
um, and just make sure I place them. Sometimes I'll place them in the middle of my mat where it's really, really sticky. And that is even better. Okay, I'll do my pink one and then we'll be done cutting. So I'm going to cut off my excess and I did leave the purple big so it would be easier to transfer. But let me show you to still save vinyl. So you can see here. To still save vinyl, I'll kind of cut it like this. And I'll still leave a little piece on the edge here so that it's still intact in the place I need it to be. But this way. I can still save as much vinyl as possible. I really hate wasting anything, especially vinyl. I know it's not terribly expensive, but I just think, you know, what other projects can I do with it? And sometimes I really like to challenge myself to use scraps and, you know, a scrap project. I made my sister some baby onesies and I used almost all scraps which was really, really awesome. Uh, I made about 20 onesies too, and I really, I used all scraps. Okay, I'm gonna finish weeding up my design here. And when I uh, do it, I wanna have it kinda like this. Just go really carefully and slowly. Um, I hope you guys can see me. Uh, take your time. I'm not being as careful as I should be, but I know you guys just want to get to the good stuff, so I'm trying to ooh, stab myself, do as quickly as I can, and then I'm going to go show you back to my computer. Ooh. I'll move my computer to me. Um, so now that it's done, we can push finish. And I can use my overall design to find out what height my transfer tape needs to be. And I'm going to put my plastic cover back on my mat before I start doing this so I don't accidentally get something stuck to it because... I've been known to do that. So my overall design, so now, cause we ungrouped it before, I'm gonna select all and group it back together. That way I don't accidentally hit something or move any pieces. So now I can see that my design was just shy of seven inches wide and it's about five and a half inches high. So I'm going to cut my transfer tape in a second and then we'll start applying. Now, I did not do registration marks. Most people prefer that because they wanna line it up. I hate wasting vinyl, so in any way that I can, I will not waste it. So I usually just wing it. Um, you can get, I have a laser level that I, I use sometimes, and I have a, um, I have a, you can just use a ruler, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm going to cut my transfer tape, and I'm going to apply the purple layer first. And now I can see, uh, when you see your image on the screen, oh, you can't see my screen, I'll pull it back in a second, um, you can see how you have the blue box around your image so you can see that the lowest point is this teal piece and the widest point on the left is this purple piece and the widest piece on the right is this purple piece right here so you can see exactly what is supposed to be the biggest so I'm going to leave my design over there with my computer and I'm gonna put my folder here and I'm going to just pull my the piece of my transfer tape back. Um, I really like to put my trans. I like to put 
my design on the transfer. I'll show you. It'll be easier to explain it. Um, I got my Cricut scraper too, and um, I like this transfer tape because it has the grid lines and really I can't line anything up straight. Everyone always asks how I get everything so straight and I don't think they are. So because this was a new piece of vinyl I know my edges are straight so I can kind of line it up this way. Uh, might have made this just too short but we're going to make it work. So I'm going to make it Yeah, just too short. That's all right. It's only for this piece. So I'm going to put it on. I like to scrub or burnish, rub, whatever you want to call it, in all sorts of directions. And I, I like to flip it over on the back and rub from the back. If you're having trouble with your transfer tape, try. You can peel it up this way. Um, some people pull from the back. They pull the vinyl from the transfer tape. It's up to you. I just, I usually throw my trash on the floor, but I'm going to put it aside for now. And I'm just going to kind of line it up. Now I could have done any number of things beforehand. I could have made a square on here. I just eyeball it, which it's for my niece. She's four. She's going to love it anyway. So, and I'm just going to carefully, I do it with my hand and then I'm going to burnish. And because my transfer tape is a little short over here on the right, I'm going to make sure I don't pull from that side. Um, I pull at a 90 degree angle and this is a really great surface to pull from the plastic because it's stuck on there really well. I don't have to worry about it. So sometimes as you're pulling, if you have a piece that's coming back up, you can just um, put your transfer tape back down. That's why I peel very slowly and you can just rub it back. It's fine. Um, so now I'm going to do the black piece next and I'm going to put it on my transfer tape like this. And it's probably not straight, but I'll do my best. Um, so I can see on my image that the A from R goes right under the E here. Um, and the O from only is pretty close to the M. So that's about good. Um, unless you're layering on top of each other or you did your image really close, you really are probably going to be fine. See, my R is pulling up a little. I didn't burnish well enough. So, um, just rub it back down, but, um, you usually, you can cut it pretty close, but I, I can see this bubbled up a little, so I have long fingernails, sometimes I use that, um, you can use your scraper tool, it's up to you, um, a lot of bubbles will go away when you're, uh, after sitting for a little bit, so now I'm going to do the pink next. And because you guys all have access to the images, if you have Cricut access, you'll be able to easily pull up this image and see everything I'm referencing without me needing my computer right here to show you. So, uh, most of you shouldn't have a problem visualizing what I'm talking about. Um, I can see the, the arrow here kind of goes into the R and I'm going to place it down. You don't have to worry as long as your transfer tape isn't too, too sticky. It's not going to affect the vinyl that you already put down. So you really don't have to worry about that um, too much. I usually make sure that my transfer tape isn't that sticky before I start layering, just to be on the safe side. Now I'm going to do my starfish next. I'm going to put one at a time so I can just carefully only burnish this is why burnishing is so important I'm only going to burnish around the one that I want to use right now leaving that one there for after and I'm gonna place it and again I'm just looking at my image over on my computer and I can just because this material is so plasticky and this is going to stick so well I, could, I just rubbed that down with my fingernail and I was good. So, uh, that was 
very easy. Do that again. With the bigger images, my fingernail will usually work, but or just the pad of your finger. But when you're using leathers, I always recommend burnishing because you really want to make sure you get all the tiny spots, especially if you have insides of O's and all of that. You want to make sure you really get it on there. So I'm going to get these bubbles up and then this design is so cute. I can't wait for my niece to get this. Okay, put this on. Just to make sure it's burnished well. Um, you can always cut smaller pieces of transfer paper too. Put everything on your transfer paper and then start layering everything so that you don't have to do this step by step. But uh, that's up to you. Sometimes I have scrap transfer paper, which I probably do upstairs. I don't know. Um, and I'll use that, but it's really just up to you how you want to go about it. Okay, if that looks good. All right, so it's super easy to layer, and this image was free. There you go.